Today's victim is a 2018 Chevy Suburban 5.3 liter engine. It has already been diagnosed for a P06 DA code engine oil, pre uh, oil pump pressure performance. This vehicle has a dual stage oil pump and I've already diagnosed it as a faulty oil pump pressure control solenoid mounted directly on the oil pump. So. Uh, this vehicle requires disassembly of most of the engine to get to the oil pump, which is what this video is going to be all about. I'm not going to cover diagnostics. I will show you what I did. I'll tell you what I did. And those of you that understand will. And those of you that don't really need that information will just watch it because, well, you find it interesting. Anyways, let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is install a uh, bungee from the steering to the brake pedal because I plan on disconnecting the steering shaft and removing the steering gear and I don't want the column to spin wildly. Even though it's already locked up, I don't want some dummy to come in here and turn the key on and just let it spin wild. This will just pop right off. And then there's one bolt on this dipstick tube to remove and then we're gonna go down below. We will be coming back up here later, but we need to remove that one bolt so we can get the oil pan off. There's a better view of the engine oil dipstick bolt. It's a T30 Torx. thing that I always do when I do this job, I will uh, get the oil filter draining, get the oil cooler line draining so it's not dripping all over me while I'm working. Just gives it extra time to, to drain. Remember, it's always a tight fit, so probably need to pry it out here. Got it. Back that away from the diff. Shove it up. We're going to remove this diff pull it away from the prop shaft and then go down. 
and uh, there's a little better view of the cooler line there. Okay, so here's a little better view of where we're at right now. There's those two bolts for the oil cooler pipe. Uh, differential's gonna come out next. Uh, gonna have to... Okay, so the front differential assembly, this guy has to come out. It is a tight fit up against the steering gear, but it will come out. Need to remove the axle bolt on both sides. And then we've got two large nuts there and two 18 millimeter bolts that come in from the bottom there. And once I get all that removed, also you need to disconnect your uh, axle vent there, electrical harnesses, etc. And I'm gonna get a jack to support and lower that when I'm ready. Some match marks. <laughs> then what you want to do is you want to take that, shove it up, do that on the both sides. Here's that differential connector up top. I'm using a 90 degree pick to help me with that little clip and to apply that little release tab. I'm gonna need both my hands to do it, but I'm just showing you. Okay, so I decided to lower the steering gear before I try to get the axle out because that one nut is just, it's too close to these electrical connectors. I don't wanna risk damaging the gear. So there's two bolts there, 18 millimeters, two bolts here, 24 millimeters, and one pinch bolt here to remove. Uh, remember, I bungeed the steering wheel earlier specifically for this reason. So there's your steering gear pinch bolt removed. that's for sure uh, there's one more pit push pin on the harness up here that I couldn't quite get to so I think I'm gonna lower the axle down to get to that one okay so the nuts here are actually 21 millimeter I think I misspoke earlier still got the two other bolts on the other side supporting it yeah, I'm gonna have to grab a uh, flex head on that Okay, so now that this end of the diff is loose and it's dropped down, there's that push pin up there that I was saying you need to get to. See that? That one push pin, don't forget when you remove the bolt on the other side or you're going to end up hanging the weight of the axle on this wiring harness and you don't want to do that. transmission jack that I want to use is currently in use, so we're going to do this the hard way, business as usual. Oh, 
throw this on the bench by hand or I'll throw it on the ground, but I usually like to keep stuff at waist level. Saves my back. That's what it looks like after you get the front diff out. There's like miles of room to get this oil pan out now. So we got to remove these two bolts from the transmission. Uh, there's this little cover on each side, one little bolt. I don't know if I can show you that. There's it. There's one bolt. There's one of those on each side. Here's the bolt on the other side. There's a uh, connector here that you need to disconnect. One bolt there that holds this bracket on. And then up here on the front you got one electric connector and two push pins. So there's the dipstick tube that we removed earlier. There's a harness retainer to remove. One bolt there on this side as well for that bracket. And I just ended up with a big mess on the floor. This is why I told you I always start with the oil cooler line. I like to get all the oil drained out of that as much as I can to avoid messes. Okay, so I've got everything loose. The brackets are all loose. Here's the transmission cooler lines. Uh, you don't have to unbolt it from the transmission. You can if you want. It actually, okay, yeah. There is enough room. Uh, if you wanted it out of your way, you can unbolt it from the transmission and just swing it completely out of the way, but I find that's not really necessary. Don't forget these two long bolts in the back here, right there and there. They're uh, long 10 millimeter headed bolts and all the rest of them are up here, 13 millimeters. Okay, so I've got all the bolts removed. I installed one bolt by hand on each side. Definitely only want to, you know, you don't want to use only one because it, once the oil pan falls and, and it catches on one side, it's going to snap that thing right off on the oil pan. So put one on each side. Uh, pry point right here between the oil pan and the block here. You can pry gently and on the same, same thing on the other side. Just don't go crazy with it. Don't force it. You're fighting silicone sealant. Once you get it going, you usually come off. And then I can remove those two bolts just by hand. Okay, so uh, take a look here. This seal stuck to the block pretty bad. Just watch out for that when you go back together. Make sure you're not, you know, leaving that there and then putting the oil pan back on with another new seal and they made up and it's just, it's gonna cause some real bad problems, especially being here. If you have a leak here, this is your suction, the oil pump suction. You know, you don't want that to leak there. It'll suck air. There's also two seals right here and here that could stick in the same way. This, this engine's like really super clean inside, so they've been doing a pretty good job of taking care of it. 
Okay, and now that we can actually see the oil pump, here's the solenoid that is the uh, faulty component. I tested it externally and it had over a thousand ohms of resistance. Specification is 10 to 30 ohms. As you can see, there's a retainer that is not in the right position. So this is most likely a factory installed fault. It looks like that little retainer is supposed to be in the hole, that little hole there. So I would assume that this vibrated and rattled its entire life until we finally had a failure. And like I said, I tested it externally at this connector because this harness actually loops up over and then uh, goes through the timing cover there. I can't get my light in there. But yeah, there's another connector up there. I'll show you when I get the timing cover off. And then the harness comes back down here. And right here, I popped this little retainer open so that the oil cooler lines can be moved out of my way. When I go for the crank bolt, I'm gonna use my 24 millimeter socket, short socket, and a stubby impact. But I need to warm up that bolt first and soften the thread locker. Otherwise, I have no chance of even getting it loose. And I'm gonna leave the belts on to help my impact get that bolt loose. Okay, so I got this propane torch on low. You do not need to use a lot of heat. You do not need to heat the hell out of it. It does not need to be glowing. See how the uh, heat is spreading out? That's what you wanna see. I just wanna warm this bolt up just enough to soften the thread locker and that's it. And here's our crankshaft bolt with the uh, thread locker on the face there. So like I said, if you do not warm this up, you will not get this bolt off. These are well known to be stuck. But it all, that's all it takes. You just need to warm it up and soften this and it comes right off. Air cleaner is going to come off. Going to remove the SERP belt. Going to cut the AC belt off. Cut the vacuum belt, belt off. Going to remove the uh, water pump crossover assembly and everything associated with getting that out of there. I believe you have to remove the alternator, the bracket, you need to loosen up the AC compressor and let it uh, you know, scoot it away from the block. So there is a little bit involved with it, but we're, gonna, we're trying to get down to that timing cover, remove the timing cover. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a tool, serpentine belt tool for that. Tensioner, you know, add my extension to it something like that i think you get the idea yeah take the tension off and remove the belt and then like i said we're going to cut cut the uh, ac belt off on the vacuum belt belt because it's a stretch belt and you should have disconnected the battery before you even started but if you have not done that yet disconnect the battery before you touch this stud just a little thing that I picked up over the years. I will add a little paint mark to the outer edge of the belt just in case I ever had to reuse it. This belt has some wear on it. I'm not going to reuse it if I can help it. I believe we ordered a new one and if not, then we will. But uh, yeah, that's just a little tip just in case you ever had to reuse the belt. And you know what? The last person that removed this intake manifold did not install any of the harness retainers. And, you know, this is not a part of the job that I'm doing, but yeah, I think it would just be a good idea to just take care of that, you know? It takes a second to take care of a potential problem in the future. And perhaps it'll make my repair look better because I wouldn't want someone to open up the hood after I did all this and then they think that I did that. So just by doing that, hey, it looks a whole lot better. That's just how they're building cars these days. They don't want you to work on them. Crack them loose by hand. Be, uh, be nice to your tools. Once I come back here with the air ratchet, air ratchets don't like to crack bolts loose. Crack this one loose too.
go crazy with it. Take the rest of it by hand so it doesn't go falling down the hole. Got your primary engine ground right here. And before I go any further and make a big coolant mess, remember we disconnected that connector earlier. I don't want a bunch of coolant and water getting inside of there, so it only takes a second to just throw it in, you know, throw a bag over the top of it and protect it. Just helps you uh, avoid any problems later because I've done this job in the past and ended up with just a little bit of coolant in that connector and it came back with a check engine light. This was years ago, so now, ever since that day, I've been weary. Okay, so I popped all the clamps from my coolant hoses. I'm not going to open up the coolant yet because I'm going to take this bolt out. There's a bolt here for the compressor and it goes all the way through. This long bolt goes all the way through and pinches. So you need to remove those two bolts. It just makes it easier to do it before you make a big mess of coolant. Okay, so there's a view of the AC compressor. You see how it pinches onto that bracket and it, pinch, it pinches onto the water pump crossover and the lock there and the long bolt goes through. But the problem is that it's so difficult to move. I can't get it to move by prying. So what I'll usually do is I'll remove the stud here and then pry between here and here and swing it out. So give me a second, I'll remove that stud. And because this is stuck, I'm gonna remove the stud here. And that little stud there is a five millimeter. Don't force it, just, you know, if it doesn't go, find out why. But yeah, you'll have to un get that unhooked. It might take some fighting to uh, get it off the block, but now we can actually, you know, at least move it. It's going to require some more prying. Got to get that pry bar in there carefully. Don't want to use a lot of force. Come over there. Here it comes. There we go. Okay, so now that the AC compressor's hung out of the way, there's uh, three, I think, three bolts on each side for the crossover. Remove the hoses and drain the coolant. Then you've got harnesses here, so you got two push pins, one electrical connector there. These two hoses, obviously. I need to grab a tool for that one. Carefully get that pick in there. Work it around, crack it loose all the way around. Watch, oh, it's gonna come off like butter now. Oh, yeah. All right. that one too. Now here comes the big gush, the big mess. Hey, aren't you glad we put that bag over the connector now? Okay, so this is a 15 millimeter. three 13 millimeter bolts on each side. Did I get it all the way out? No. Yeah. Crack 
loose on both sides. Let it uh, drain a little bit. Got into a little bit of a hurry. I forgot to show you. This hose also needs to come off and you have one bolt here. This one's giving me a fight also. So if you use a hose pick, you won't cause any damage to the hose. Don't forget about that bolt and that nut also. You know what? There is also a bolt right there holding this bracket on and uh, you know, there's some retainers going to the harness, but it's easier to just remove that one bolt. Suction the block so that you don't have coolant continuously dripping down. Don't have to get every bit of it, but just so long as it doesn't drip out of the hole. Get some of the spillage. Okay, and then I'll take a uh, spray bottle of water and just rinse everything down. Rinse all that antifreeze and coolant out of there because it's slimy. It gets places you don't want it. Don't go crazy when you spray the water, but... Just going to give it a good rinse. Get the uh, coolant out of the AC compressor clutch there. Flush that out with fresh water. It just makes it a lot nicer when you're down below working if you get this out of the way first. So from here, you're gonna want to use a puller and remove the balancer. I'll show you that. And then we're gonna remove the timing cover. I can't remember if I unbolted the vacuum pump from the engine the last one I did because there's one bolt right there that's just behind the pulley. I mean, I might be able to get it with a wrench and just back it out. If not, there's, I believe, four bolts holding the vacuum pump to the block. You would have to pull that away, clean it up and replace that gasket and then proceed. But I'm gonna try uh, leaving the vacuum pump attached at first. Just gonna use this tool that I've had for years, balancer puller, it does GM and Chrysler. Probably gonna use that adapter. And of course the bolt. Okay, so I had to use the longest adapter actually. I uh, can't really show you installing the puller tool because it's so tight in here, but I've got the three jaws of the puller on the back of that pulley there. I'm going to now do this by hand. I would really not recommend doing this with any power tools. You want to have that sense of feel as it's coming off to make sure it's not excessive. I can feel that, yeah, there's a lot of resistance, but I can also feel it moving. So, I won't bore you and make you watch all of this.
Okay, how about this? Can I use a flex head 13 to get on that bolt? No, not really, but I could probably break it loose with a wrench and then use it to loosen it. Let's try that. Now, don't nobody comment on my Craftsman tools here. They are, I believe I bought these when they're still made in USA. Still made in USA. Uh, nope, that's not gonna work. Okay, maybe it will work. It's just an awkward position. can't reach down far enough to get any power on that. Okay, so I did get it cracked loose with the bolt, or the uh, wrench. I'm not having too much luck getting it to spin like that, but it is moving. Just let me get that bolt out of there and then I'll see. I will see if we can get this timing cover off here without screwing with the vacuum pump. Let's find out. How about this? I'll use my Craftsman wrench to just turn it by hand like this, the old school way. I guess you can tell where I got my start, huh? Working in the driveway, working at home with the home, home tools. Okay, well I was able to fully loosen the bolt, although I could not pull it out of the hole. I'm going to carefully, gently pry, crack it loose. Might have to uh, do a little more prying. Silicone holds on pretty well. Oh yeah, come on, is it gonna come off? Is it coming out of there? No, I think I, no. Oh, wait a minute. Got it. Uh, although, you're gonna have to disconnect that, I should have disconnected that connector down there earlier. Okay, so I went back down below, disconnected the connector. How does it look? Remember, this retainer was not installed properly. The wiring visually does not seem to have any problems. If I could get my finger behind it, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna measure resistance of the solenoid. Okay, so I'm measuring the oil pressure control solenoid and it is above specification. It's supposed to be 10 ohms to 30 ohms. We're measuring 59 ohms. But remember I told you earlier that I measured over 1,000 ohms and I took my measurement from this connector. So that implies that this sub harness has a problem. Here's the little connector here. And what did I find? I did open this up earlier and I found it full of contamination. Okay, so look at this. It's full of oil. So that would explain why I've got a over a thousand ohms when I test from here. I've got excessive resistance here in addition to a faulty oil pressure control solenoid. So uh, if I cannot clean this up, I might try and clean that up. Uh, if I'm not able to, I'll have to replace both ends of this harness. Surface prep, obviously cover up your engine innards and take a nice, fresh, new razor blade. Carefully just take off the bulk of the old sealant. You're not trying to remove metal here, just taking the bulk of the sealant off. And then we'll come back with some more tools and cleaning process afterwards, but the razor blade will get the majority of it. As you can see, razor, razor blade does a real good job of removing the sealant, but it doesn't get all of it. Yeah, so uh, there's some residuals left over and 
no matter how much you go over it with the razor blade you probably can't get it all so we're gonna come follow up later with some silicone gasket remover and a wire brush About time for a new razor blade. Just plan on getting an entire pack of razor blades for something like this. I mean, you won't you you won't need the whole pack, but you're going to need probably at least ten of them to do the whole job, maybe more. I, at least I like to use a new razor blade when I'm dealing with uh, precision machined aluminum surfaces. Here's a new razor blade. Even after you thought you were done scraping and you couldn't get any more when you use a new razor blade you'll get even more up i like to get everything i can with the razor blade before i continue and don't you don't want to scratch the surface i'm not applying any force just using that sharp edge to just peel off the layer of silicone Okay, then I'm going to use some silicone gasket remover from Ford. This stuff works awesome and it smells like oranges so it makes it uh, enjoyable to work. This stuff is completely optional, you don't have to use it, but it does really help to loosen up the old sealant. Just got to wet down the surface, let it sit for a minute or so, and then take wire brush and just gently brush in circular motions. I'm not applying any force. I'm not trying to scratch the surface. I'm just wiping off any of that silicone that didn't want to come off the first time. And notice how there is some sealant stuck down in the bolt holes that we're also going to have to take care of. Circular motions prevents you from creating a leak path. So that's what the surface is going to look like when it's all cleaned up. Uh, obviously we're going to have to finish degreasing it. This, this side I have not done the silicone gasket remover and the wire brush yet. And you can see how much is left over. See right there, there's sealant left over there. It really does not take a lot of force at all. I'm just gently scratching that off. much better. Okay, after I got the majority cleaned up, I'm gonna rinse everything down. All the old sealant, all the um, bits of metal and just trash and nastiness. And then I'll clean up the bolt holes. And we also have to clean the engine block surface for the oil pan. We need to clean up the oil pan itself and the timing cover. So the process is essentially the same. Same process down here. Scrape off the majority of the sealant with the razor blade.
do that over the entire surface. Same deal that we did earlier up top for the timing cover. Somewhat satisfying. Okay, so I've got the majority of it scraped. I just wanted to mention that when you're trying to clean back here, you need to watch out for this little tone wheel. To see that crank sensor up there? This is your trigger wheel for the crank sensor, and you absolutely do not want to damage any of these teeth because you will have to. Well, you'll have to replace the crankshaft. Don't do that. Some of the silicone gasket remover just helps you get all the remainder. Same process. Okay, so I've got the surface scraped. Now I'm gonna take a 5 16 inch drill bit on the eight millimeter bolt holes and I'm gonna turn it backwards. Don't really wanna go forwards and if you do, do it carefully because this is soft aluminum. You could cut the threads. You are not trying to remove metal. I'm just trying to wipe off that old sealant from the hole so that it won't interfere with our new sealant. Okay, watch, I'm gonna turn it backwards going to get the majority of it and I'll turn it forward very carefully. This is a sharp drill bit so I don't want to actually cut metal. So that'll help to loosen it up, get the majority and then you're just going to do that on all the bolt holes. You might have to use a smaller drill bit on the six millimeter bolt holes. Here's a quarter inch drill bit on the six millimeter hole. Quarter inch drill bit on the six millimeter holes. Just want to clean that up. I went up a size to 21 64 seven inch drill bit on this one, just because it seems to do a little better job of getting the sealant out without touching the threads. So I'm going to do that on all these bolt holes, make sure they're nice and clean. Okay, and then after you're done cleaning those holes, just blow out the remaining debris. Okay, so I'm gonna wash everything down. I wanna get rid of all the oily residue that's gonna drip down onto my new sealant. And then I'm gonna wipe everything clean and I'm gonna just make sure everything's dry. Probably gonna have to wipe it over and over and over again before I go back together because we don't want any residue which will cause our new sealant to leak. Look how nice and clean that surface is coming. This is after probably 10 minutes of just continuous wash down. You can see that there's still a little bit of oily color in the degreaser, I'm still getting oil. You cannot have any oil residue drip down onto your surface or you're gonna end up doing this all again. So it does take a lot of degreaser. I've used at least a gallon so far. It's gonna take a lot and I still have more surfaces to clean. This is gonna take, you know, this part is gonna take the most of all because this is where all your engine oil is gonna be dripping. I'm gonna air dry, blow everything clean and dry.
drill bit for that one. Right here on these dowel pins, you need to be very careful to get all of it. So don't leave, you know, don't leave that little bit there because when it when you go to bolt it back on, that is going to cause a little shimming effect, and then the cover will not want to sit, sit down all the way. So be sure to get all of your sealant off from around that pin, and then I'll use the silicone gasket remover and a wire brush to get the rest of it. The razor blade, we're gonna have to get the majority of it carefully. That's what you're going for on the pan. It should be real nice and clean. Same thing on this side. Just gently clean it up. Okay, so I've got the front cover all cleaned up. The, I cleaned this side of the harness. I'm gonna replace this side because it's leaking oil through the connector. I need to replace this seal. So I'm probably gonna flip it over and then put some wood underneath this cover to support and then knock that seal out. So again, I'm gonna replace this piece because it's wicking oil all the way through the wiring and through that connector. How about this? This old pulley just happens to be sitting on the bench and it looks like it'll do the trick. Let me try that. Okay, so that's what you're going for. I'm not going to apply any force on the sensors, the wiring, any of the parts of the cover. Uh, it's fully supported, so when I try and knock that seal out, there won't be a problem and I won't break the cover. Clean up inside there before I put the new one in. Alternatively, you probably could have used a block of wood or two or three uh, and supported it in the same way. I just happened to have this here conveniently and it worked. So maybe I'll, I'll keep that. Okay, and, and when you're gonna drive the new seal in, keep in mind you've got those pins, so you don't wanna just slam it in while, while it's only supported on these two little pins. You're probably gonna break something. Again, I'm just gonna use this pulley to support on the inside here. It sits nice and flat. Uh, it won't touch the bench, but all I have to do is put a piece of wood. Uh, stick a piece of wood down like that. And now my cover is supported to drive my new seal in. Here's your new seal. It comes with a protector. This type of seal needs to be installed dry. Do not apply any lube. I'm going to carefully reinstall that and then I'm going to find a driver to just drive that in and uh, all the way flush. You can actually see on the back here where it there will be a gap so you can you'll be able to tell when it's all the way in. I'm going to go find a driver that will fit around that. So I happen to have the OEM specified driver tool. It will not work with the seal protector in place but uh, you can use just about anything that fits the outer diameter of the seal while still allowing you to drive. I'm gonna get it started nice and flat. Do that again. Just make sure I don't wanna roll over that seal and damage it, so. there's no gap on the back so you know it's all the way flat and seated so now this front is pretty much ready to install after a final wipe down and applying sealant another thing I didn't really mention is that I placed this uh, soft material on the bench because I don't want the steel bench to scratch up my soft aluminum surface so it just helps to protect it
this baffle so that you are sure to get all of the, the debris associated with cleaning all this. Remove the baffle, clean all that out before you uh, reassemble. We're gonna do all the same process that we've already done on the block surface, on the timing cover surface, the timing cover itself. Everything is the exact same process. Here's another one of those dowel pins that you need to be sure is really clean. speed up the process and use something like this right actually you absolutely do not want to use something like this on precision machine surfaces like this so that's why I'm using a razor blade I'm very carefully using a wire brush I'm just trying to clean up this surface I'm not trying to remove metal and cause low spots this is a nice flat machine surface we should keep it that way and I just want to show why it's really important to remove all the silicone from the bolt holes. As you can see, I just pushed up a chunk. So imagine that gets caught in between the two surfaces that you're trying to seal. You just created a leak and you're going to do this all over again. Same thing with these little uh, rubber inserts. You usually want to always remove those on a job like this, especially something that seals up a silicone. Now let me throw that back in the hole and show you because these are designed in such a way that they will hold the bolt when you, uh, when you go to install the component. But here's the problem is that you're gonna try to push that up and start the bolt. And as you can see, that little seal can push through and get dislodged. So now once it's through here and you start tightening things down, this little guy is gonna get smashed in between the two surfaces. And once again, it's gonna cause a leak. So I always remove these, they serve no other purpose than to hold the bolt in place. So get these guys out of there. Clean up all these little extra spaces too in between, because this is a sealing surface and this is a sealing surface, but this little channel inside is supposed to be where your extra sealant squeezes into, as well as this little inner surface you want to clean up because that's what your, uh, the sealant's going to squeeze out and take up that space. So if you don't clean that up, you're probably gonna end up with some troubles. I would also suggest, because you're in here already, excellent time to remove this oil pump suction tube. I have to fight that out of there with two hands, but it's an excellent time to pull that out of there and just make sure it's good and clean. Okay, I had to use two hands and a twisting motion to pull that out. Okay, take note, there is no seal there. So after I clean that up, I might apply a little bit of anaerobic sealant just to make sure that there's no suction leak. Cause if you have a leak here, you're gonna pull air. You're gonna get air mixed in with your oil stream. What does this look like? Uh, no concerns. But at least I put eyes on it because I've done these before and found chunks of silicone right from the factory plugging up the, uh, the oil pickup. So at least now that I've put eyes on it, I feel good about putting it back in. Okay, and remember, I've been using a wire brush and I've been cleaning this surface, but I have oil passages here. So of course I'm gonna rinse and clean this. 
but I'm gonna flush out these oil passages and boil them clean with air just to be sure that there's no little pieces of wire that could be left in the oil pan and then sucked up into that new pump and make its way through the engine. Gonna rinse all them bits of silicone out, all the old oil. And then I'm gonna use the air wand to blast any remaining chunks of silicone out. Don't go too crazy on the solenoid there, or the uh, uh, oil level sensor, I mean. Like I said earlier, we're gonna flush those oil passages out and then blow them clean with air. Here's the oil pan after cleaning. You want to make sure that you blow all the fluid out of these bolt holes before installing the uh, windage tray, the baffle, whatever you want to call it, and also the dipstick tube or the, the pickup tube, the suction tube. Blow out all the fluid from the holes so you don't break this oil pan. Okay, my oil pan is all nice and clean. My tube is about to go in. I've wiped these surfaces down nice and clean with degreaser. I'm going to apply some anaerobic sealant. Although there was no sealant, I don't think there was any sealant when I took it out, but there may have been. It's just a good idea to add a little bit of anaerobic. Do not use RTV here because a chunk of RTV could uh, eventually get sucked through here. By using anaerobic, the sealant will not cure except for where the surfaces are meeting and there is no air. Okay, as you can see, I've put a, a light film of anaerobic sealant. So I'm gonna go in with a twisting motion to help spread that sealant. I might need two hands to do this, but put that in there, twist it into the final position, and then I can install my bolts. That just helps you. It's gonna help prevent you from a suction leak here. Okay, so this is what everything looks like after it's been cleaned up. I'm gonna install my new seals here. Um, I'm gonna show you that you wanna press straight down. Do not do this. Do not roll it in or glide your finger over it to do that because what you're gonna do is you're gonna stretch the seal. You just wanna push them straight down in position and install them dry. Same thing here. little chunk of debris there so before I go back together I'm gonna you know blow this all clean and and our surface looks clean but I'll show you what you need to do soak a rag and some degreaser wipe that surface clean that will cause you a leak and you'll have to do this all over again so make sure your surfaces are actually truly clean. See how much more I was able to get off that surface? Doesn't really look any different, but now we know it's clean. A little bit of final prep on the front of the engine block. Same thing that I've been doing. I feel like I have to show it or somebody's gonna skip a step but uh, I just want to drive the point home that the process is the same. And then I'm going to do the final wipe down on this surface, just like I showed you on the oil pan. So I'm going to wipe down this surface and the timing cover surface and then apply sealant and install. Of course, I should probably install the new oil pump first, but that's the plan. And I'm going to say it again and again and again, blow out the the fluid out of the hole. especially right here is a good example see there's a little bit of coolant in that hole so if you put a bolt in that hole and you tightened it down you could crack the engine block and you don't want that so make sure all these holes are clean see that little bit of liquid
liquid coming out. That'll crack a block. Don't let it happen to you. All right, so here is our new in the box oil pump and the solenoid resistance brand new is about 22 ohms. Um, like I told you before, the old pump measures about 60 ohms and the specification is 10 to 30 ohms. So the new one is right in the middle of the specification. Okay, brand new oil pump. Gonna prime that with some oil, turn the gear which will draw more oil in, continuously pour. Make sure your oil is clean when you do this. And I'm using 5W30 rather than uh, 0, 0, 020 right now, just because it does a little better, of, better job of priming. And we're gonna do that until it starts coming out the output like that. this a little bit and you're gonna want to get it in there and wiggle it rotate it back and forth and wiggle it might take a lot of effort a lot of trouble try not to dent this little trigger wheel by the way so don't want to force it just get that rotor to mat made up to the crank gear there and sometimes it takes a lot of uh, wiggling to get that aligned. What I did here is I just barely started those two bolts to help me with the alignment. So I can kind of wiggle and try to get that gear, the rotor engaged. Get my finger in there and try and feed it. I'm not sure, it doesn't usually take this much trouble to get them on here, so what is going on here? Nope, all I had to do is just keep wiggling and twisting and it finally did engage. So, let's talk about this for a second because there is actually a oil pump alignment tool required by the repair procedure, but I'm gonna tell you that from personal experience, the tool is worthless because it is designed in such a way that it's supposed to be a tool that you install before you uh, remove the old one. And it's intended so that you can install, install the old pump right back where it was. Well, there's not a whole lot of adjustment here uh, on this pump because those little rubber inserts are holding tight to the bolt. And we don't have, you know, there's not much wiggle to get this thing out of alignment in the first place. I'm gonna show you how I do it, and I've never had a problem doing it this way. Don't forget to blow the crankshaft bolt hole out too. See that fluid come out? Don't wanna blow your crankshaft in half either because you didn't clean that out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the old crankshaft bolt. And what I'm gonna do here, I think I want more threads than that, so I'm gonna use a shorter spacer. But, uh, I don't know, maybe it'll it might bottom out. You don't want it, you don't want it to bottom out. You want you want the face to touch the crank so that the, the bolt would technically be stretching. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just snug up these bolts and then I'm gonna rotate the crankshaft, which is gonna help to center up the pump. And like I said, there's not really a lot of room to get it out of alignment anyway. And uh, the tools, like I said, are basically worthless when you're installing a new pump. And this is what I'm talking about, about that bolt bottoming out. You do not want it to bottom out in the threads. You want to make sure that that gap actually does go away. So now you know that this bolt, this bolt would be safe to tur you know, turn it clockwise and not damage the crankshaft. Okay, so I'm not tightening this. I'm just doing this with my fingers. Just barely what I can do with my wrists. I don't want that tight. Just barely snug with my fingers. That's all you need.
just barely finger tight. Yep, no more tighter than I can do with my fingers. Uh, it's still loose enough that I can just wiggle it enough and now I can turn my crankshaft and if there was some sort of uh, wobble or that the pump was just not quite centered up on that crankshaft, the crank will kind of help center it up. And like I said, you, you really cannot get it out of alignment if, because it's held so tightly in position by the bolts and those little rubber spacers. Hard to screw it up. I like to do one whole turn. I'm fighting against compression right now. I'm not gonna let it turn back. You hear that air gushing? I'm fighting against the compression, but if I let go, it's gonna wanna spring backwards. Okay, that's pretty much one full turn. And now I can torque these oil pump bolts. Don't forget to torque them. And don't take my word for it, I'm just some fool on the internet. If the oil pump is removed to perform a different repair and is going to be reused, the oil pump alignment tool must be installed on the block before removal. Uh, if pump alignment tool is not used before removal, uh, a new oil pump must be installed. If a new pump is installed, oil pump alignment tool is not needed. A new oil pump will automatically center correctly when installed. Like I said, I have my own little way of doing it and uh, the tool is not really needed unless you're going to reuse the oil pump. And uh, I have, I've used the tool in the past to reuse an oil pump and it's still, it's pretty useless. It's worthless. Okay, I torqued the oil pump bolts. My old crankshaft bolt left a little bit of that thread locker sealant on the end of the crank, so I'm gonna clean that off of there. And then, like I showed you before, I'm gonna do the final wipe down of the surfaces with the degreaser in the rag, and then apply sealant and install. And I'm just gonna say it right now, uh, leaving the vacuum pump on was a little bit risky to do it this way. So if you're not comfortable reinstalling that cover, once you, you know, you're gonna apply the sealant and then you're gonna wanna reinstall that cover carefully without touching the sealant to any of these parts or uh, causing some sort of contamination. Cause if you do, it's gonna leak. So if you're not comfortable with that, just take this out of here right now and get it out of your way. Okay, I've got my rag soaked in degreaser as shown before. Look at how much more trash we get off of that surface. And it did already look clean. Gotta get rid of that. This is probably my third time doing it. The rag is soaked with the degreaser once again. And look at how clean that comes. That's how you know you're ready to go back together. That thing should wipe clean. And then of course your rag is gonna leave behind some lint. So I usually like to use my clean finger after I've cleaned and dried it, or I'll use a glove and I'll wipe it off, or maybe take a little air wand and blow all that lint out of there. You don't want the lint on the surface and you don't want the lint getting into the engine internals anyway. Don't forget about the new wiring harness on that timing cover. Okay, so I'm using AC Delco RTV engine sealant today. That's what the OEM specifies, or at least that's what they provide me. You can use uh, a lot of different types of sealant. I like Permatex Ultra Black for oil or Permatex Right Stuff. Okay, I've got my sealant applied. That's about where I cut my nozzle. You really don't need a lot. Since I did it with the vacuum pump uh, still installed, I do have to put the bolt back in this corner before I go back in. Okay. 
Let's hope this works out. This is gonna suck, I can already tell. Maybe I should have removed that vacuum pump. Dowel pin hole lined up. Oh, yeah. I only I only got a little bit, but uh, I had enough sealant on there that it's not going to be a problem. And we haven't tightened the bolts and squeezed it out yet, so I really don't think that that would be a problem. Drop the bolt. The long ones are in the bottom corner here. It's fairly obvious, but hey, maybe I'll just mention that. tighten the bolts yet. I'm just going to kind of gently suck them in. There's that squeeze out that we wanted. I'm going to make sure, make sure that it actually sits down flat all the way before I tighten it. I don't want to force this and break the cover. Everything's looking good, feeling good. So I think now I will be able to tighten it. I feel more comfortable tightening by hand on an aluminum block. sealant that's what you're after there you may have noticed a little gap there that's actually just because the, uh, the ceiling surface is more like back here okay so there's our new oil pump the timing covers reinstalled here's all the oily residue that has since dripped all over our nice clean surfaces so this requires continuously wiping and cleaning and degreasing don't forget to reconnect this guy. We came so far, it would be terrible just to not get that connected. But then remember when we took it apart and found it, this little retainer wasn't even in the hole. And it looks like it might be very difficult to even install it. So that doesn't even make sense. Uh, I don't see how you could possibly install this harness, which is attached to the cover at the same time. There's no way, so. I'm not sure exactly what to do there. I'm, I might have to just do that with two hands. Okay, so I was actually able to feed that back behind there and install it into that hole. 
and then install that correctly. You get the Okay, so take your razor blade and trim. Trim your sealant from your timing cover. All right, so I've got the sealant applied to the oil pan. I wiped it down and degreased both sides of it like I've said and shown before. Now time to install. So it's difficult to get a good camera angle where there isn't something blocking your view. So if that's a problem, I don't know. What so I'm very carefully going to install this without touching my sealant band and if I can help it. Easier said than done. Okay, so it's at least up in position, and now I can install the rest of the bolts. I would suggest getting all the bolts started in the hole before you tighten any of them because you don't want the sealant to squeeze out and fill the bolt holes.
screw started in the hole so that the hole does not fill with cement. Here's a better view of the sealant getting squeezed out. And on the other side, if I can get up there. Okay, this is after all the bolts have tightened. Look at that beautiful bead of sealant on this side as well. Harder to see on this side, but yeah, we've got a great looking bead of sealant. Let's go look in the front. Beautiful. Okay, so I reinstalled the oil cooler pipe, the nut there, uh, the little pushpin retainers on the wiring harness got damaged, so I resecured them with some zip ties and I'll snip, uh, snip those off. I've got a new seal for my dipstick tube before I go and install it. And then we're gonna go reassemble up top the water pump crossover and all that. Got that new seal installed. Just gonna wiggle and twist on the way in. Make sure that that seal doesn't get torn or rolled. Okay, so back up top, look at that nice sealant. We're gonna install the crankshaft balancer with the appropriate tool. And I'm just gonna show you this little tip here that you're gonna want to uh, push that bushing back so that this AC compressor is not a fight to reinstall. Just gonna do something like this. Uh, I've got a nut and a bolt with some washers and a socket. So I'm trying to push the bushing that way. So I wanna put the bolt on this side and the socket on this side. And then I'm gonna install the nut and washer. And then all you gotta do is just tighten that and it'll push that bushing back. Might be able to get away with doing this without a wrench on the back there. Okay, so there's that AC compressor bushing pushed back. We can do the same thing for the alternator bracket bushings. Uh, what do I need to do? I need to push them out that way. So I'm gonna put the socket on this side, stick the bolt through, and do the same thing. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Okay, so you need to use a balancer and seller tool such as this. Do not use a hammer to pound this on. Do not use the crankshaft bolt to pull it on. You will have a bad time. Got the tool set up here. So you're gonna install the balancer just right up to the crank by hand. It only goes on one way because there's a keyway. 
I've got the tool assembled and I gotta sneak it in there all the way into that hole. Get it threaded in to the crankshaft. Thread it to the crankshaft all the way and then I'm gonna use this big nut here with a bearing. It has a bearing on it to help pull that balancer in without causing any damage. Do not try to do this without the tool, trust me. bottomed out. It's fully seated as you can see. Take that tool off of there now. So I'm going to get a second wrench because I don't want to turn the engine backwards. I'm going to put that second wrench right there and hold it from turning. Okay, so I used two wrenches to loosen that up. I'll have to get this out of the crankshaft. Hopefully the whole entire tool comes out and doesn't leave a piece behind. When you assemble this tool, you should usually uh, tighten everything together so it doesn't get stuck in the crankshaft. Let's hope the whole thing comes out. Okay, luckily the whole thing did come out. And this is what I'm talking about. This piece and this piece, uh, they thread together and then there's this little collar. And if you tighten up this collar good and tight, this piece will not get stuck in the crankshaft. Okay, so you wanna throw away the old crank bolt and install a new one. And let me go look up that torque procedure. So there's a crankshaft holding tool and a multi-stage tightening process, bolt with flanged head. After we uh, do the initial torque of 59 pound-feet, we're going to do 125 degrees afterwards. Uh, I happen to have the tools, but if you don't, you may need to go get them. Unless you have a way to torque that bolt to 59 pound-feet and then also do 125 degrees, I'll uh, share a little trick that I use in that situation um, because sometimes I don't want to blow out my torque wrench by super over tightening it. You know, a big bolt like that, if you tighten it to 59 pound feet and then another 125 degrees, you might overload and blow out your torque wrench. So we have to have some way of uh, counting the degrees. And there's a few different ways to do that. There's a few different tools to do that. Uh, I like to do a low tech, old school method. And I'll share that with you. Okay, so we know that we have 360 degrees in one complete circle. We know that this is a six point bolt. So 360 degrees divided by six points equals 60 degrees between each point. So we are after 125 degrees. So that means that if we were able to achieve that 59 pound feet initial torque, then all we need to do is place some marks and tighten that bolt another two points for about 120 degrees and then maybe just past that you would get about 125 degrees i kind of doubt i will be able to achieve that 59 pound feet without holding the crankshaft but we will see yeah i'm not going to be able to do it without holding that but if you were to find a way, I mean, uh, you could get dirty with it and put a pry bar down below and try to hold the uh, flex plate, a little risky, but uh, if you don't have the tool, you don't have the tool. I would suggest getting the tools. And this is what I'm talking about. You can remove this little cover and carefully use a pry bar to maybe hold that flex plate. It's risky. If you're gonna do that, I would probably remove this so you can get straight on it. Uh, we're only tightening to 59 pound-feet, so I don't think that's too crazy. Although, like I said, this is risky to do it this way. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. I would recommend just go get the proper tool. So, like I said, I do actually have the proper holding tool, and that's what I'm going to use. But I know the reality is that if you're watching this video and you're a, a repair technician, there's a good chance you're being expected to do this job without the proper tools. Yep, I've been there many, many times over the years. Or maybe you're just the DIYer and you don't have the money to do this, to buy this toolkit. 
I would suggest renting it, buy, uh, rent it, borrow it, whatever you got to do. This is truly the best way to do it. But like I showed you, the uh, risky method with the pry bar could probably get you to that 59 pound feet and then I could show you what to do from there. Okay, so this is after I've done the initial torque and that little trick that I showed you earlier about the uh, degrees on the bolt. I marked the bolt so that I can keep track of the degrees that I've turned it. So I know that when the orange marks meet up, I've turned at least 120 degrees. So whether you're gonna use the holding tool and continue to torque it with your big breaker bar or something, or if you've got a bad mofo impact wrench that could do that, I would still recommend using the proper tool, but you do what you gotta do. This is what it's looking like. The tool is braced up against the frame and I'm having to use quite a bit of force to get that bolt to turn anymore. So I don't think you're gonna be able to do this without the holding tool. Death grip tight plus quarter turn. Jesus! Yeah, you're not gonna get this done without the holding tool, I'll tell you that. Well, I overshot it just a little bit, but that's okay. The bolt is now tightened fully. And don't forget to reinstall the oil cooler lines to this little retainer, because I popped that loose earlier. Okay, so from this point on, assembly is just a reverse of the removal process. Anything moving forward, I'm just gonna show you little tips here and there. Just gonna say it again. Blow out all the fluid from those bolt holes unless you want to break your block. Okay, so the AC belt comes with this little installer tool and the tool doesn't work that great. It's It works okay, but the vacuum pump belt will require another tool. Also, that does not work great. So here's one way you can do it with a little zip tie. Although you do have to be careful that you don't damage the belt when you do this. You're gonna take up the slack and then rotate the crank and it'll feed that belt right on. You can do the same thing with the AC belt, but it's uh, a lot tighter and I wouldn't recommend it. So I would actually use the tool on the AC side. And if you think that that looks a little harsh on the belt, well, the tool does about the same thing. So I didn't build it. I didn't design it that way. I'm just showing you an alternative method that works for me. Better than the special tools that are specified sometimes. Oh yeah. Now just snip off the zip tie and then after I re you know reassemble all this I'll do something similar with the AC belt but I'm going to use the tool for that one. Uh, don't use any sealant here on these gaskets and then I mean Everything else is just pretty straightforward reassembly from here. This right here is why we did the bushing on the AC compressor because now I'm just able to move it and install it without any resistance whatsoever. If you don't push that bushing back, if you don't push these back, you're almost not even gonna be able to get that reinstalled. Same thing with the alternator. It just falls right in position and you don't have to fight it. Okay, now I'm going back on with the new AC belt. There's that tool, like I said before, it doesn't work that great. It doesn't work much better than using a zip tie. Okay, sounds like it popped on. Just gotta get the tool out of there now. Go. Okay, so the belt did install, but it's obviously coming off now. So I would continue to rotate the crank while I get my hand down here and kind of feed. You want to feed the belt back onto the pulley where it's supposed to be. I don't think I can show you that because I need both my hands. Ah. 
There we go. That's better. Okay, so fully reassembled up top. Here's another little tip. If the customer drops some big money to have you do a job like this, spend the extra minute. Just wipe the dust down and make it look nice under the hood because you know the customer's gonna open the hood and see what you did. Clean all this up, just make it look nice. And I'll do a final rinse when I'm done, but I'm gonna get the majority of the dust at the rag. The, the uh, water hose won't quite get the dust. Give it a little wipe down, all these little surfaces. Gonna make a visual impression on the customer when they come to pick it up. I've observed many customers, the first thing they do is they go and open the hood. And we know it looks beautiful down there, but the customer's not gonna be able to see that. Just a minute, just a minute. And already the, pre the presentation just looks 100 times better. Look at that, just a minute. Okay, going back in with the axle is a real pain in the butt. That's about the orientation you need to go in. Make sure your axles are on that side when you go up. I, this is like a three or four handed operation, so you're not gonna get to see this. Okay, everything's reassembled. Just doing the final rinse down now. Get all the little oily residues off the frame, all the coolant puddles out of the holes, all that good stuff. don't forget to put the oil filter in there. It's another one of those things that only takes a minute and it can solve so many problems before they even are a problem. Now doesn't that look a lot better? Okay, I'm gonna key up. deal with that so maybe I will hold the gas pedal to the floor and then attempt to start which should put us in clear flood mode so we can crank the engine without it starting I'm gonna crank and crank 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 let the uh, oil the engine oil pressure build up the gauge is probably not going to read any pressure because I'm cranking right now but now I know that at least I did something, I, I, pr I pre-primed the oil system as best I could. Well, I've got oil pressure, so that's a big plus. No checking in, no check engine light yet, so that is also another big plus. Don't go crazy with it, just a little rinse. Okay, now let me grab the hose and just rinse all this mess off and we'll be good. Gonna go take it for a drive, make sure this all dries out, make sure there's no leaks, no problems. Rinse down this part a little bit. Like I said, the, customer, the first thing the customer's gonna do, they're gonna open the hood and see what you did. So we better make it look real nice for them. Like I said, don't go crazy with it. Don't hit it with high pressure. Just a gentle rinse down. And I did not get the engine hot either. So when the customer comes to pick it up, it's gonna look so much better.
Okay, now I'm just gonna go take it for a long drive, get it all dried out and warm, and then, hey, should be good. This is after about a six or seven mile drive. We're getting nice and dried out, and boy, doesn't it look clean under the hood. Visual inspection underneath after the road test. Everything's looking good and dry. I'm happy with it. Well, that's all I got. That's all, folks.